Welcome to Yoga Santa Barbara Style. This is a light-hearted, fun, and informative one-hour show with wide appeal. Whether you're a seasoned yoga practitioner, a once-in-a-while yogi, just starting your yoga adventures, or if you've never even taken a deep breath, there's something for you in this program. My name is Ray Colby and I'm the host of Yoga Santa Barbara Style. Each week I interview a guest yoga instructor from the Santa Barbara area. The instructor provides a 25-minute yoga sequence filmed on location around Santa Barbara wherever they teach. I will also present tips and techniques on breathwork, asana, and meditation. My name is Sarah Remick and I will present Yoga News which highlights news and events within the yoga community relevant to Santa Barbara area yogis. I also present a playful and informative nutritional segment called Food for Thought. Each week is full of brand new guests, new poses, new health and wellness hints and recipes, new breath work, the occasional mantra or mudra, and new smiles. We hope that you will sit back and enjoy us for the next hour. Or feel free to get on the floor and practice with us. We present a lot of juicy information, so if you want to take notes, have a paper and pen nearby. We look forward to bringing you this joyful, educational show with open hearts. If you miss an episode, visit us online to catch up on what you missed. Thank you for joining us. We've got a great show for you this week. Our guest instructor is Siddhi, who teaches at Yoga Soup, the Santa Barbara Yoga Center, and at various locations around the world. I will discuss the wonders of coconut in my Food for Thought segment, and in Yoga News, I'll talk about the Yoga Journal brand and their conference they held this summer. I'll discuss breathwork in the context of a recent workshop I attended with Rod Stryker at the Yoga Journal conference in San Diego. I'll provide a method of meditating and a couple of helpful visualization techniques, and I'll discuss the value of meditation. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to Yoga News. Standing in line at the grocery store or perusing the magazine racks in the airport, it would be hard to miss the beautiful and engaging covers of the ever-popular Yoga Journal magazine. For over 35 years, Yoga Journal has dedicated themselves to reporting the expansion and revolution of the yoga movement. Yoga Journal was founded in 1975 with the intent to unite the ever-growing yoga community and to provide material that combines the essence of classical yoga with the latest understanding of modern science. I think it's safe to say that yoga has now fully entered mainstream America. According to Yoga Journal's most recent Yoga in America survey, 15.8 million people in the United States now practice yoga, spending nearly $6 billion a year on classes, equipment, clothing, vacations, and media. And while more people are practicing yoga than ever before, the real reason for Yoga Journal's continued success is that the magazine remains true to its original mission give readers insightful articles on yoga filled with the most current scientific information available while honoring the 5,000 year old tradition on which it's based. The magazine features editorials on the basics, making yoga asana and philosophy accessible to new students or those longtime students looking for a little refresher. There is an eating wisely section for the food part of the yoga lifestyle, there's a home practice section to assist in incorporating yoga asana into your home life, not just in a studio. The master class section highlights in-depth instruction written by master teachers. A media section highlights the world of music, DVDs, books, and other noteworthy happenings in the yoga industry media. The OM section features trends and news in the yoga world. Well-being is a section devoted to the holistic practices such as bodywork, herbal remedies, and nutrition that complement a yogic lifestyle. And lastly, there is a wisdom section that discusses how incorporating a yogic philosophy in your life can help modern day yogis or the average Joe live a more fulfilled and evolved life. Yoga Journal also publishes their own series of DVDs and books under the Yoga Journal name. They produce international versions of their magazine and host a website full of information and a shop to purchase yoga-related products and gear. They also hold four conferences per year that attract thousands of participants to world-renowned instructors, classes, and lectures. 
This year, here on the California coast, we are lucky to have two Yoga Journal conferences. The first was in San Francisco, and the second was in San Diego this past July. Conferences are regularly held in San Francisco, New York, and Colorado. Next year, there will be one in Florida, and in 2014, they'll return to San Diego. The San Diego conference in July covered five days with over 30 master teachers like Anna Forrest, Scott Blossom, and Catherine Budig, teaching over 100 classes as well as lectures, workshops, and kirtan to choose from to customize your own yoga experience. Yoga Journal conferences are unique in that you can orchestrate your experience by attending any class you want at any time or by following the preset schedules they call tracks, like the beginner track or the contemplative track, to get the most from your yoga conference experience. With event sponsors like Lululemon or Acacia, Samazon, and the Chopra Center, you can be sure there will be tons of delicious snacks and enticing information as a wonderful addition to the asana practices. Our host, Ray Colby, attended the conference in San Diego, and he will incorporate some of what he learned there in his presentations over the coming weeks. Visit yjevents.com for more information on the conference and to check out the lineup of teachers and classes available. And you can visit yogajournal.com for more information on the magazine and everything under the Yoga Journal umbrella. In upcoming episodes, I will present a few yogic breathing techniques, but I will only present a few. I think that we can all learn Ujjayi Pranayama, for example, along with a few other breathing patterns within this environment. However, the more advanced techniques require student-teacher interaction, which is not appropriate for this venue. So we'll simply add a few small additions to these patterns over time, showing that with a small but sustained effort, you can apply these breathing patterns to different areas of your life and health with remarkable results. Recently, I attended a workshop on pranayama with Rod Stryker. And he said, to make yoga more accessible, spend 10 minutes with the breath. As you consciously shape your breath, deepen your effortlessness. And he reminded us that the explicit teaching of pranayama is to remove the veil of inner light. He then went on to express that pure breathing requires that we resolve specific pathologies in the breath. The first he mentioned was gasping or loud breathing. The second was irregular breathing where the inhale and the exhale were not of the same length. And the third he mentioned was emotional breathing. I'll focus here on the irregular breathing and help to bring your attention to your breath. Mr. Stryker described the breathing cycle as a continuous cycle, as shown here in this image, where the inhalation and exhalation are equal, and the inhale isn't unconsciously or otherwise held, but there's no point at which the breath stops, not at the top before exhaling, not at the bottom before inhaling, not anywhere. Unless you've been practicing breath work or are naturally gifted in this area, this is probably not how you breathe. Many of us pause at the top or bottom of our breath, or both, as this diagram indicates. But if you sit with your breath for 10 to 15 minutes, not controlling it, but observing, you may begin to notice even more erratic patterns in your breath. You may notice that not only does your breath stop at the bottom and top, but it flutters or catches in other places perhaps near the top of your breath, as this diagram indicates, or near the bottom, as this diagram illustrates, or any other combination of irregularity in the breath. So going back to the first diagram, begin to consider a fluid breathing pattern such as this. Inhale equal in length to the exhale. No pause anywhere. As you reach the top of your breath, the inhale gently becomes an exhale. Now, strive to distribute your breath evenly throughout your lungs, top and bottom, left and right, front and back. At first, you may have a hard time sensing the parts of your lungs that aren't opening. A gentle, steady touch and verbal feedback from a yoga buddy can increase your awareness and help you learn to breathe fully and evenly. 
And as you begin to practice and achieve this fluidity of breath, you will find more breathing techniques become available to you. And you are better able to handle the constantly changing circumstances in your life. So I urge you to begin a regular breathing exercise, if only for 10 to 15 minutes a day. It will change your life on and off the mat. Our guest instructor today is Siddhi. Siddhi teaches at Yoga Soup and she also teaches at the Santa Barbara Yoga Center. Hi Siddhi, welcome to the show. Thank you for inviting me. Oh, it's a pleasure and mm -hmm. an honor to have you here. How long have you been practicing yoga? I actually practice now for the last 12 years. 12 years? Mm -hmm. And how long have you been teaching yoga? 12 years. <laughs> <laughs> I really, I took my first um, Kundalini yoga class and three weeks later I was in a teacher training. Oh, mm -hmm. so that was really fast. Yeah, you... it was really, I knew that this was what I came to do. I see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How did that come about? Well, I went, I was injured and I was treated for a long time and one time in this room where I was treated a woman came by and she went into the room next door and I heard her chanting. And I said, what are they doing in there? And when she came out, she said, well, why don't you try it and come? And I went the next day into her class and that was it. The moment I practiced the Kundalini Yoga, I knew this is what I'm supposed to do. So I took the teacher training three weeks later and that's here I am, <laughs> 12 <laughs> that's years <wonderful>. later. <laughs> yeah. And what do you consider to be the, um, the benefits of yoga? Benefits associated For me personally, it's really that I feel by combining all, most of the limbs of yoga that I really align my spiritual body, my mental, my emotional, and my physical body. And I find stillness within. What do you consider to be the biggest risks associated with yoga? Right now, at this time, I, my, my concern is that we are moving away from yoga and misunderstand yoga. That we really see yoga as something where we just focus on the body, but not so much on the soul and on the spirit. And that it, it's more a sportive activity than a spiritual activity. And do you think there is a way to get from one to the other? So if, if someone, if our audience, uh, for example, just practices asana, then is there a way to move from there? into a, a more full yoga that, that um, is aware of all of the limbs instead of mm. just the single limb of asana? I think the body is a wonderful entrance and then it depends often on the teacher. Hmm? Is the teacher willing to go into the unknown of meditation and mantras and mudras and really explore and guide people to a different, onto a different path? Mm -hmm. I think the distinction is, uh, if, do we have a lot of instructors or do we have teachers? Mm -hmm. And I think a teacher's um, purpose is really to uplift the spirit, not just only the body. Mm -hmm. And why do you teach? I teach to do exactly that. <laughs> you know? I see that there is a lot of need out there, a lot of hunger, and a hunger, hunger for the, to really get in touch with one's own soul and destiny and that people want to really be in touch with their own potential. And I think all the limbs of yoga are really wonderful tools to support a human being in their evolutionary journey. Mm. What is it you bring to your students in your class? I think what I bring to my students is upliftment, empowerment, um, grace, dignity, and that they learn to trust themselves and honor themselves. Thank you. Besides yoga, what are your favorite activities? I'm a grandmother. <laughs> I'm a mother. And um, I love to hike. I love to walk. Oh, yeah. I need to be on, in the air. You know, that's my favorite thing. I'm not really into competitive sports. Or that's maybe my age. I don't know. But I don't do this. I just walk. We have some wonderful hiking trails mm -hmm. here. Yeah. So you must yeah. uh, utilize the trails yes, locally. Yes, I do. Mm. Yeah. I love that here. Yeah, yeah. I do too. I'm, I'm on yeah. the trail almost every day. Oh, good. <laughs> and uh, in your hiking and uh, dealing with your grandchildren, 
um, do you see any benefits of yoga on those activities? I would say that my grandson is one of my students. Mm -hmm. You know, he started in the womb, because I also teach prenatal yoga. Um, and I could see him growing up. You know, he came to my classes from the beginning. And he re knows all the chants. He knows everything. Right now he's in the age where he has nothing to do with yoga, but that's typical with 11, 12. Yeah, but I know he will come around again. We planted the seed. And I see that his character and his self-esteem is so strong. And I really relate that to that his breathing is really calm and centered. And that his mother practiced yoga while she was pregnant, and that he has been in a lot of my classes. Mm. So it's beautiful to see these young souls, you know, and then we give them the freedom to go for a while on their own, and I know they come back. Oh, yeah. 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 And, and what is he doing now? Well, he's into surfing, he's oh, into wonderful. dancing, he's into singing, you know, everything. Very expressive. Yeah. Yeah. Great. And yeah. so you probably see some of the benefits of his yoga practice yeah. in the other activities yeah. that he performs yeah. as well. Yeah. It's mostly really the self-esteem, the trust into himself and um, the faith that this young soul has. Yeah. And I think that's very valuable. Who have been your favorite teachers? I had a lot of teachers. Uh, I was blessed. Uh, over 35 years ago, I met with Bhagwan Sri Rajneesh, also called Osho. So he introduced me to meditation. That was my biggest gift that I was been given, really. Um, I follow Sadhguru Jagaji. Um, I learned from Gurmukh Kawakalsa. I learned from Joseph Michael Levery. I learned from Anand. I always look for teachers because I think that I, as a teacher, have a responsibility to continue learning. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to be fed so that I can share. And you mentioned meditation, mm -hmm. and I understand you have a background in meditation mm -hmm. that goes beyond your yoga practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you tell me a little about that? Yeah. Well, you know, what we started, it's like 30 years, 35 years ago, we started with the wired meditations, the dynamic meditations, the kundalini meditations, the nataraj, the vipassana. Um, <clears throat> so, and that was, is to this day, the anchor of my own spiritual practice. I will not start a day without my meditations. What do you think about the virtual explosion of yoga in the popular culture? both in classes and online? I personally think that, you know, it's a good movement because I think we need to raise consciousness. We need to create more awareness. So I think it's a good movement. Is it the best way? I don't know. But I think it's something where I think maybe yoga is really the way to create a quantum leap in consciousness. And what is it that excites you about yoga? Me personally or yes. my students when I see my students? Uh, well, we can maybe do a little of each. Uh -huh. so, but let's start with you personally. Well, when I started, I thought I was very flexible and very strong, and I was in a full illusion. You know, when mm -hmm. I came to my first class, I, thought, I looked at the people. And in Kundalini Yoga, we have all these wild postures. And I thought, well, this is like nothing. Uh, two minutes later, I didn't feel like that. You know, I was like, oh my God. So I went personally through a big transformation. I became very strong. I'm very healthy. And I'm excited about that. You know, because I think the more we grow up, the more we have to move to stay flexible, you know, to have the golden age, you know, in a healthy way. Because we don't want to have the golden age, you know, in a walker, with a walker or a wheelchair. Huh? Sure. So we need to move more. So and I experienced that yoga, the physical yoga, as well as the mental yoga, really helps me to stay present and healthy. That excites me to mm. experience that. Mm. Do you think that's the result of all of the different parts of yoga, or specifically breathing or meditation? What are your thoughts on that? Well, how do you want to do yoga without breathing, you know? I mean, it's very sad to see that a lot of students, uh, although they come, they don't know how to breathe right. So I think all the facets are necessary, at least for me. It might be different for you, but for me, I need it all. 
you know. So you've been practicing yoga for a dozen years mm -hmm. now. What, what changes have you seen um, in the community and in yourself over that time? Mm -hmm. Well, we have a lot of different yogas. Huh? So it seems like there's always a new yoga popping up, which I, you know, embrace. Because, I, like I said, I think every person has a different ex entrance point. You know, so I think it's right now there's a yoga for everyone. Oh, that's mm. beautiful. Um, what I also feel in the last years is a lot of competition coming in, which I'm very sad about, mm. because that's not what yoga is about. And it becomes a lot of business. But sometimes my concern is it's about quantity and not quality. So and I wish we would turn a little bit around again, huh? where we don't focus on having packed teacher trainings, but having small teacher trainings and really focus on the individual. So I think that's, but that's my personal conflict. Maybe other people see that differently. But I personally like that we not race so fast and really watch out what we are doing as teachers, you know. So I wish, I wish we would come back to the roots, to yoga. Well, Siddhi, thank you so much for being on the show today. It's really been a pleasure and an honor to have you here. Thank you. And if a student out there wants to keep up with your activities, find out where you are and what you're doing, do you have um, a web presence or something that they can look to to mm -hmm. find out what you're doing? I do have a website, okay. huh? and it's siddhisyoga.com. And that's S-I-D-D-H-I-S-Yoga.com. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, thank you so much. Thank and you, Ray. Really appreciate you being on the show. Thank you. Good. <laughs> Come into prayer pose, long deep breathing. Let the breath settle, let your mind be calm. And while you breathe, just for a moment, really connect to your liver that organ that supports you. You know, it's our biggest, largest detoxification organ in our body. Over 500 functions. And all it needs from us is awareness, good food, clean fluids, and a great attitude. If we relate to our organs, while well, they are still healthy inside of us and supporting us, then I can be doing a better job for a longer period of time. So yoga is not only about looking good, but it's mainly about feeling good. And we can only feel good if the inside of us, the organs, the systems, are working in alignment. And for working in alignment, we also need to work for the inside of us. We need to take care of every system, of every organ, and not just take them for granted, but use the yoga to really be in union with what is inside of us. Let us tune into that with Om Namo Gurudev Namo, bowing down to the Divine Teacher within. Inhale deeply. Om
for protection. At gare name, jagat gare name, sat gare name, siri guru de de name. At gare name, jagat gare name, sat gare name, siri guru de. Sat gare name, Siri Guru Dev de name. Inhale deeply, suspend your breath, apply the root lock, and exhale. Then open your eyes, bring your hands onto your knees. <coughs> Good. Bend the middle finger down. Bring the tip, tip of your thumb to the tip of your ring finger. Extend index and pinky, uh, the liver mudra. And we start our breath of glow. And I want you really to consciously pump the energy, the prana, into your liver. So breath of glow. Eyes are closed, rolled up to the third eye. Really extend the index and the pinky, huh? Large intestine, small intestine meridian. Our liver is associated also with the emotion of anger as well as greed. Rest your hands around your knees. Gently start to rotate your head, very gently. Inhale to the heavens, exhale down to earth. Inhale through the nostril, exhale open mouth and really wiggle your jaw on the exhalation so you relax any tension that you might holding in your jaw. Really allow yourself to move the jaw on the exhalation. And then very slowly come into the center. Inhale deeply, suspend your breath. Exhale and let go. Good. And hands stay around your knees. Start your Sufi grind. Inhale. Exhale. Big rotations. Have an emphasis to really squeeze your stomach, squeeze your liver when you rotate backwards. Inhale and come into the center. Hold your breath. Exhale, release. Good, both legs out. Flex your feet. Why don't you come into the middle and then you can go back. Okay. Interlock your thumbs, huh? which means you really get your ego under control because um, the ego is the brings us into trouble. Twist to the left, exhale, lean over. Inhale, twist right, exhale down. Inhale up into the center, exhale, sweep through your auric field. 
Bring your hand, feet in. Fingers in front of your shoulders, thumb into the back, elbows parallel. Inhale, twist to the left, exhale, right. Kathy, you might not want to do this one. That's a lot for your neck. Yeah. Inhale into the center, hold your breath, pull rectum, sex organ and navel, pull them in and up, contain the energy. Exhale, relax the arms down. Rest your hands openly on your knees, eyes stay closed. How is my relationship to my liver? Do I know where it's located? Do I know its function? Or just do I take this organ for granted and never pay attention? Inhale. Exhale. Come onto your hands and knees. Few cat cows. Hands are straight under your shoulders. Inhale. Good. Inhale into the cow. Exhale, curl your toes under. Stretch the back of your legs. Walk your hands towards your feet. Let the head hang. Bend the knees. Rise up each vertebra at a time. Like a rectal, make sure your knees stay bent when you come up. Good. Bring your arms up. This is the liver posture, yeah? So we twist to the left as far as we can, looking into the left palm. Exhale, moving to the right, looking into our right palm. Keep the arms at 60 degrees. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. <laughs> Good. Make sure, Renato, you bring your arms more up. Huh? So the angle of our arms huh, has an impact on the organs. Palms facing each other, arms are straight. The elbows are not bent, not even slightly, because you want to stimulate the meridians. Good. Palms together, so the left and the right hemisphere come. Good, inhale into the center. Exhale, prayer pose. Long, deep breathing. Good, now roll your blanket or your mat. Have your heels elevated. Toes are straight forward. This is a little too little. Can you roll your mat, Renata? You, it's better for you. And really tight. Just make it really nicely tight. You will not regret it. Yeah, that's great. Even more. Trust me. You think that's good? Good. Arms forward. Inhale to the left, exhale, squat down, inhale up, hold the breath, exhale, squat down, right, inhale, hold it, exhale, and exhale. Three, inhale up. Bring your arms overhead. Exhale, sweep through your auric field. Hands into prayer, pose namaskar. 
long deep breathing. Regulate your breath. Good, and then let go. And come lying down on your left side. Rest your head in your hand. Bring your right leg up, hold on to your big toe. Yeah, bring your index and middle finger, place it around your big toe. And breath of fire. And focus on your liver, huh? It's right located right underneath here. Close your eyes. And let the breath, the movement, communicate with your liver. As if you give your liver a little massage. Exhale and let go of the leg. Come on to your feet. Table pose. You can have your hands any way you want. Huh? If your wrists are a little weak, you can have your hands like this. Press up. Now from here, in and exhale through the nose. Then inhale through the open mouth. Exhale, mouth. Inhale, nose. Exhale, nose. Inhale, open mouth. Exhale, open mouth. Good. Press up through your heels. Keep your body stable. Keep the breath pattern. Inhale, deeply hold the breath. Exhale and come down. Good. Come back lying on your left side. Continue with breath of fire. Left side. Right leg up. Index. Good. And knit a finger around your big toe. And let the fire go into the liver. Good. Make, take your head into your left palm, huh? as if you rest your head there. Good. When we keep our liver healthy, our emotional state will be healthy. Let us just relate to the internal organs like to our best friends because actually they're there for our li entire life. So we might as well want to get to know them and relate to them like we relate to our beloveds. We want to feed them the right way, touch them with our thoughts and prayers the right way. Slowly let go of the leg. Rest for a moment on your side. And gently come up, standing. Bring your hands, palms up, 
through your legs as far as you can go. Now curl your tongue, let go of your head so everything is relaxed and loose in your neck. In and exhale, long, slow and deep through the curled tongue. Huh? Stick the curled tongue out just slightly. Stretch the arms through your legs as far as they can go. Remember all these postures are liver postures. Breathe deeply. Now start your breath of fire. And make an effort, bring your hand further back. Huh? Don't let go of the posture. See if you can really stretch through. Bend your knees. And then slowly on the exhalation, rise up. Take your time. Rise up each vertebra at a time. Good. Place your hands onto your liver. Just for a moment, hold this liver. And let the prana in your hands penetrate it. The life force given to the liver. The warmth. Imagine you transmit love and caring. Making a commitment to find out what's right for my liver. What kind of juices, what kind of food, so that I eat for my liver, drink for my liver. Good. And then slowly open your eyes, bring your arms out to the side. Exhale and come sitting down. Inhale, come up. Exhale down. And come up. And switch legs in the front. Hmm? Balancing the prana and the apana. If you need your hands, use your hands. Huh? Use common sense. And if the prana, the life-giving force, and the apana are in balance inside of us, we can be in balance. Take it easy. Support yourself. That's what hands are for, huh? So if you can't do it without the help of your hands, then don't do it. Do it with your hands. But move the energy up and down. It's fine to use the hands. A little easier on one side. <laughs> Keep a smile on your face. Huh? If you have a grumpy face, your liver suffers. So keep it simple. Standing. Good. Hands into Namaskar. Breathe. Regulate your breath. Good. Now open your eyes. Bring your hands around your waist. So, Mary, you stay there. You two come forward. So with the next posture of the liver reacts, huh? we will feel a little dizzy or nauseated. So as soon that that occurs, you come into prayer pose and you keep your eyes open and you stay for a moment until everything adjusted inside of you. Huh? So hands around your waist. Inhale, 
big rotations. Inhale up, exhale down. And then very slowly, everybody come into prayer pose in front of their heart, eyes open. Find your center, breathe into the space below your navel, your hara. And then very slowly come sitting for meditation. But now bring it back into your liver mudra. Bend your middle finger down, the tip of your thumb to the tip of your ring finger. Extend large intestine and your, th and your index finger and small intestine and heart in your pinky. Curl your tongue, stick your tongue out slightly. Inhale through the curled tongue. Press the tongue against the upper palate Exhale through the nostrils and continue. And feel how your body is cooling down. Slowly let go and come and rest for a moment. I'm lying down. Um, inhale for a long sunam. see God in all. We don't see God at all. Satnam. Thank you for coming. Welcome to Food for Thought and welcome to the magical medicinal world of coconut. There is so much to discuss when it comes to the powers of the coconut. I hardly know where to begin, so I'm just going to jump right in. Coconut can be found in many forms. There's coconut oil, cocoa water, coconut milk, and coconut meat. You can use coconut internally or topically. Let's start with the most common form, coconut water. Cocoa water comes from young coconuts. In the tropics, you'll see the green coconut shelves, like these pictured here. Those are the young ones. Most of the markets in the U.S. have removed the outer green shell to reveal the soft part that you see here. Coconut water is chock full of potassium, minerals, and electrolytes. And I mean really, really full of them. It's a wonderful rehydrator for those who are active or sweat a lot. Sitting in the hot sun at the beach all day, nothing tastes better than a cold coconut water. When you purchase them in the store, the people in the produce department will cut them open for you, as they've done here. You can see it's got like a nice little top, and they just popped it off for me. Now, if you have an adventurous spirit and a good strong knife or hatchet, you can open them yourself by making four cuts, as I'll show you here. I'm going to try to make four cuts here, 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 and here, like a little square. <coughs> Sometimes I'm better at this than others, so we'll see. And you really want to get in there, because you got this part soft on the outside, but you have to break through all the way to the shell. Ooh, sometimes it's kind of scary. Oh, that was not a good one. Oh, that might have been a good one. All right, let's see if I did it. Oh, I, okay. So I did it. I took off 
the, uh, the soft part and the hard shell underneath. I didn't penetrate the coconut meat, but that's fine because that's a good example to show you. This is the meat of the coconut and, whew, and you can just peel it back. And this is the meat that you can eat just like this. People love it. Um, and there's the coconut water sitting inside. And you can just pour it into a glass. Spill a little bit. Mmm. Oh my gosh. This is my favorite way to drink fresh coconut water. I swear, nothing tastes like this. Oh, <clears throat> cool. Now, if that's all a little too much for you or you're in a hurry, most stores now carry the packaged coconut water which is great for traveling, taking to sports games, or just any old time you want a quick pick-me-up full of electrolytes to rehydrate you. Vita Coco is one of my favorites. I think it has the freshest flavor. But there's many brands out there, and a lot of them now come with fruit flavors mixed in. This one has a splash of mango. Now for coconut oil, coconut oil withstands very high temperatures which is a really good thing, especially when it comes to cooking. Heating oil changes the structure of the fat molecules. It can make them toxic, and the body doesn't know how to utilize them, which is why coconut oil is great to cook with because it won't break down at high temperatures. I personally think that the taste of coconut oil is pretty subtle. I can hardly ever pick it up in the taste of my foods, but some people can taste it and some people want that while others don't. So experiment for yourself and see what you like. It really is the only oil that I use for cooking. While I do use other oils, I use them after the food has been prepared so as to retain their healing properties. When purchasing oils, look for the organic, unrefined, and extra virgin, expeller, or cold pressed oil. It's preferable that they're stored in a glass or a dark container away from light and heat that can damage them. Now, coconut oil is also contains about 50% lauric acid. The only other place lauric acid is found in is in mother's breast milk. Lauric acid is so important because it converts to monolaurin, which is a compound that exhibits strong activity against bacteria, virus, microbes, and other pathogens. There's tons of research illuminating the immune-boosting benefits of a diet high in lauric acid. While we're talking about research and beneficial compounds of coconut oil, I'd really like to touch on the whole saturated fat issue with coconut. In the realm of saturated fats, there are good, bad, and not so bad fats based on their fat chain, whether it's short, medium, or long chain. Coconut oil is a combination of short and medium chain saturates. These do not clog the arteries, nor do they cause heart disease. They're easily digested by the body, and rather than being stored in the body's cells as most fats are, the medium chain fatty acids are sent directly to the liver where they're immediately used to make energy rather than storing as fat. This process being so quick and easy for the body allows the pancreas, the liver, and the digestive system to work without strain and thus it kind of heats up the metabolic system. All of that can lead to potential calorie burning, weight loss, and more energy. Now coconut meat is from the inside of the coconut as I showed you the white part, this um, funny textured meat. Uh, you can eat it just as it is. It's so yummy. People will just spoon it out of here and eat it like that. Or you can buy it dried and grate it. Usually coconut meat is from the older, more brown coconuts. Now coconut milk is used in many dishes across the globe. You can use it in soups, stir fries, sautés, baked goods, cereal, or really anything at all. It's a great substitute for dairy. You can buy cans in the stores, or once you're done with your fresh coconut water, scrape out the inside, not just from the lid, but the entire inside. There's meat all around the inside of this. And just throw that in your pan. There are many products on the market that use coconut oil for cookies, cakes, and ice creams. Coco Bliss is one of the best darn vegan ice creams on the planet, and it's made from coconut milk. It's so good, really. And while I could keep talking about the wonders of coconut all day long, the last thing I'd like to mention is that coconut oil is a great body care product. The same oil that I use in my saute pan, I can use as a body oil. You can just scoop it out and you'll see it's kind of solid in the jar, but you can scoop it out and it will melt to your body temperature. 
And while there's contradictory beliefs on this, coconut oil is said to have a naturally occurring SPF, which makes it super yummy for summertime. It's a great hair oil as well. Oh, and my cats love coconut oil. They can hear me open the jar from across the house and they'll come running just for a little taste. And coconut oil is a totally, or not coconut oil, coconut is a totally sustainable food. You can use the shells for belts and bracelets, earrings like these ones I'm wearing. These are made out of coconut. This ring is also made out of coconut. It just looks like this beautiful brown wood. They make cutlery, purses, anything at all. There's many companies out there producing these items and more from coconut shells. So this summer, get in touch with your tropical side. Go fall in love with some coconut in whatever form you like the best. I'm Sarah Remick, and this has been Food for Thought for Yoga Santa Barbara Style. In vibrant health, be well. Join us next week. Our guest will be Natalie Sampola. Natalie teaches at Santa Barbara Yoga Center and at the Source Studio on De La Vina. In yoga news, I will discuss the most recent Bikram controversy, and the Food for Thought will teach you how to make your very own iced tea brewed from the sun. And next week, we'll discuss another meditation technique, and I'll present diaphragmatic breathing. And Sarah, thank you for all the wonderful information on coconut. Of course. To your to health. Your health. And to your and to health. Yours. Delicious. Mm -hmm.